What would you say to people who say the Irish were its slaves? <laughs> um, hmm. Yes, this is true. Usually it's in the context of like forgotten history. Um, and so it's like, first of all, no one forgot it. If you haven't read a book, you know, on U.S. history, that's on you. And um, just that it was very different. It was like indentured servitude. And then Irish were able to quickly move to a position of overseer of police so hunting down escaped or free um, black people in the U.S. and re-enslaving them. The performance of Der Engel let's get some context so has the character is the character still alive? I don't think so I think she's you know, speaking from after the fact. Who is she talking to? I think she's talking to a friend. Why? Because she didn't realize that anyone would miss her. And she sees that it's affected her friend. She sees that her friend is kind of keeping this option for herself a secret. Right. Well, let's decide that she is coming to her friend to explain or to justify. Yeah why she did it yeah justification okay and she wants to take her friend's pain away or she wants to reach her friend what is she doing she is explaining and she's trying to get her friend's attention and let's place her in the space where is she in the space in the audience great okay so we'll go find her in the audience Agnes Wesendonk was born in Elberfeld, now part of Wuppertal, in the Rhineland of Germany. 
1828. Known as Matilda Wesendonck, the German poet whose most famous works are the text of five songs that composer Richard Wagner set. Fünf Gedichte für eine Frauenstimme, five songs for the female voice. Apart from these songs, she is famous for being Wagner's muse and their rumored affair. Married to silk merchant Otto Wesendonck, she was so devoted to the appearance of being a good wife that she let her name be changed to that of her husband's late wife. If I'm not real, why not? If I don't belong anywhere anyway, why not give the appearance of belonging? Wagner put me rapidly aside. I have been to Bayreuth only on visits, hardly recognized by anyone, practically unknown. And yet I am Isolde. Here on this bridge between starshine and clay, mark me a ripple. Make me a piercing drop of froth at the lip of a wave just so I can be but a note in the roar of this cresting ocean. Something has tried to kill me and has failed. So Der Engel is sincere and innocent and it's this childlike prayer that feels as if it's been repeated for comfort even though you don't understand the meaning of what you're saying. Right. And also, Wesendonck didn't stop writing after Der Engel. She wrote four more songs, right? Sure, yeah. I mean, if you think of Der Engel as childhood, things get more complicated after childhood, right? Right. You grow up and the things that give you comfort as a child always fall away and you're just kind of left with yourself. And, you know, in, in the additional four songs, she has to deal with this stuff, the things she thought she was avoiding by ending her life. She still has to go through it in this context. Right. Face them. Yeah. Okay. What she tried to avoid through suicide. What did I see to be? Born in Babylon both. I had no model. I made it up. Born in Babylon, I made it up. My one hand holding tight, my other hand. My one hand holding tight, my other hand. I made it up. What did I see to be? Rushing, roaring wheel of time, you that measure eternity, gleaming spheres in the vast universe, you that surround our earthly sphere, eternal creation cease, enough of becoming, let me be. Sausen des Brausen des Rat der Zeit, Messer du der Ewigkeit, leuchtende Sphären im weiten All, dir umringt den Weltenball, ur ewige Schöpfung, halte dach ein genug, Des Werdens lass mich sein, sausen des Brausen des Rad der Zeit, messer du der Ewigkeit, leuchten des Fähren im weiten All, dir umringt den Weltenball, ur ewige Schöpfung, halte da kein, genug des Werdens lass mich sein, sausen des Brausen des Rad der Zeit, messer du der Ewigkeit, leuchten des Fähren im weiten All, dir umringt den Weltenball, ur ewige Schöpfung, halte da kein, genug des Werdens lass mich sein. So. Oh, <laughs> 
Lucille Clifton. Won't you celebrate with me what I have shaped into a kind of life? I had no model. Born in Babylon, both non-white and woman, what did I see to be except myself? I made it up here on this bridge between starshine and clay. My one hand holding tight my other hand. Come celebrate with me that every day something has tried to kill me and has failed.
In the last days of June, under Matilda's dazzled eyes, Wagner jotted down on paper the first draft of Act I of Die Valkyrie. He interrupted this work to take Mina to Zielesburg on Lake Lucerne, where she undertook a thermal cure for her heart disease. Their household was doing poorly, but Ricard maintained an almost filial tenderness for the wife who had lived through so many difficult years with him. In a book about Agnes, Matilda Weisendonck, I can't learn anything about a woman who has the insight or experience to write these poems. So in a book about Matilda Weisendonck, I can't learn anything about Matilda Weisendonck. <clears throat> when I was a girl, I was told that behavior is what gets girls raped. When I said my best attribute is my smile, I was corrected and told, your best attribute is your bosom. I was told by the women around me, we should be happy you're fat. If you weren't, you'd be our competition. I do not compete. I live safe and warm in my head in a world that is mean to women who look like me, who think like me, who shine like me. But here on this bridge between them and the world, there is nothing to do but be myself. Every evening, son, you redden your lovely eyes with weeping. When bathing in the sea, you die an early death. Yet you rise in your old splendor, the glory of the dark world, when you wake in the morning as a proud and conquering hero. Ah, uh, why should I complain? Why should I see my heart so depressed? If the sun itself must despair, if the sun itself must set, if only death gives birth to life, if only agony brings bliss, oh, how I give thanks to nature for giving me such agony. <clears throat> yeah, and you said something really interesting earlier about research that I'm sure we'll be able to reference somewhere. <laughs> um, research done on people who attempted suicide and were able and who failed and were able to report back. Yeah, that a high number of them reported what exactly? Like a, a moment of clarity that the situation they thought was impossible to get around or get past wasn't, and that they regretted the action that they had just taken. Right. Um, and so I don't think that regret is like in Der Engel, but later. Yeah, right. Yeah. Thank you. 
Okay, Troima, uh, for our purposes, is the last paragraph of this suicide letter. And uh, you said earlier you see your friend is holding this option for herself. Yeah, there's this concept of one person dying by suicide triggering within their immediate circle or kind of periphery circle um, other people um, taking their lives. And in Troina, in the final song, the fifth song, and like I said, for our purposes, kind of our last paragraph of the letter to our friend, your character is talking about this blissful, these blissful dreams, embracing her senses and not fading. But then they do fade. Mm -hmm. In the end, they do actually fade. Um, So what what is she telling her friend in the song, in her final message? She is she's telling her that even though, you know, life can be really shit sometimes, uh, you still have a life. Um, you still have the capability of changing it and making it what you want or even just embracing the shittiness and like finding okay. something uh, to live for. Otto Weisendonk's family, Matilda's husband's family, had settled in the region of Elberfeld and Krefeld, whose textile mills had been producing silk since 1770. There, the raw materials, cotton, hemp, wool, and silk, were transported by river and then spun into thread, dyed, and woven. August Weisendonk knew how to decide for his sons. In 1833, as Luckmeyer was going into business in the Hoestrasse, he sent the 18-year-old Otto to New York to learn the textile trade in the company Loesicht und Wesendank. The third son, August Jr., also went to the United States and ended up settling in Virginia, owning a cotton plantation. Why is that white wealth able to exist in the first place in such a disproportionate fashion? You're- So I have a degree in African-American studies, and I don't think people understand the vast amount of money produced by American slavery. By 1860, the four million enslaved people in the United States were worth about four billion dollars. And that's not adjusted for today's money. That's four billion dollars in 1860. And that's just the value of the people. That's not the value of what they produce, tobacco, cotton, sugarcane. The U.S. South was producing 60% of the world's cotton by the late 1800s. The amount of millionaire families, the start of billion dollar industries would be Bezos money. There are whole families, whole towns that are still rich hundreds of years later, still. Y'all have no idea. Sojourner Truth. I am a woman's rights. I can do as much work as any man. I have plowed and reaped and husked and chopped and mowed. And can any man do more than that? I can carry as much as any man and can eat as much too, if I can get it. And ain't I a woman? I want to know what does it mean to be a woman? Is it being small and petite so a man can love the way your smallness makes him feel? Love himself more because your smallness makes him big. Every time my sister calls, I think it's to tell me my mother has died. Every time my mom calls, I think it's to tell me my great aunt or my sister has died. When my brother calls, he says immediately, no one has died. Is being a woman letting a man make you full with child? What if your body betrays you at every turn? As a woman in the world as an American descendant of slavery, in my own family, in opera, I have these feelings of not belonging. Wendy Chen. (sighs) 
I'm calling up the dead, the dead of my family. I pull them out of the earth by their hair, by the fistful. I scrutinize their bodies green as acid for traces of mine. How can I stop looking at them, at their faces? Their bones strung together are the beads of a necklace I wind around my neck. Their lives pour into me through a silver faucet I cannot turn off. Their deaths too. Suicide, suicide, the familial sickness. Surely it has congealed within me all their awful particles. Surely I have been marked. If I were first born, mystical or clean, like a sheet of cotton twisting in the wind, no. I am a piece of slate, stained, scarred with the footprints of the dead. Are they confessing what they've done to make me? They lay their hands on me like strips of seaweed. When I place my mouth at my feet, unable to speak, I feel their malformed sadness run through my hair like a comb. Recently I said, because we were talking about this, and I said something like, sorry, you know, if that was too heavy or if we're focusing too much on it or I'm asking you to talk about it too much. And you said, and I wrote it down, <laughs> quote, slavery is always with me, to be honest. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, I don't know <laughs> what else to say about it. It is. Yeah. There's this poem um, that's linked on our site for this project. Um, and it's talking about mundane things like... I, I'm just making something up because I don't have it memorized, but like I go to the grocery store and I'm still black and I'm waiting for my group to be called at the airport to board my flight and I'm still black, you know, and then there's this joke that joke, quote unquote, that I told you um, that my uh, grandparents essentially always conveyed to me whenever I was really excited about opera and like doing things that are perceived as white um and it was what do white people call a black opera singer a nigger you know so it's always this like this is the context that you live in like yes it's great that you want to do these things and you're doing them but don't be fooled you know yeah. this is what the world thinks of you 